Hi everyone. This video covers how to explore categorical data in R and a couple of mistakes to avoid when you're doing that. So when you first start working with a client's data, it's a good idea to explore the data. And that's for a few reasons. Um, you want to generally better understand the data um, and you want to use that opportunity to review all of the data and gather any questions you have for clients. Um, and in particular, when you're working with categorical data, you'll also want to look at those values and identify um, if there are any categories that are irrelevant for the project or should be combined with other categories, um, you want to list all those questions for the client. Um, you may also come across values that indicate that there might be errors in the data and you want to go back to the client with those potential errors for conversation and remedy before you can proceed to answer the client's questions. So because the data that you receive are most likely in a table format, your exploration is going to consist of um, exploring the columns as well as rows. Uh, this video is about the exploring columns and in particular about exploring categorical columns or columns that contain categorical data. So here are examples of categorical variables. Um, for example, education, where it has labels like this person was a high school grad, so was this person. Um, this person had some college education, and these two people had uh, four-year degrees here at the bottom. And then income is another example. Not Now, not income in the numeric format, where it might just list their actual income in dollars. Uh, so something like, you know, $42,300 or whatever it might be for the year. Um, but in this case, it's a range. So this is uh, the, the fact that this has a range and it goes from a lower number dash to a higher number. This is effectively a label. It's a category that people can fall into or not. Um, and so you see that with these values here. And other examples of categorical variables are things like race, gender, sexual orientation, that sort of thing. So if you want to replicate what I'm doing in this video, I'm using R version 4.1.2. And if you don't know why that's important, uh, take a look at my video called Understanding uh, Packages in R. I'll also provide a link to the code that I'm writing for this video uh, in the video description. So we'll start out by reading data into R. And in this case, it's a CSV. And so we'll use the read.csv function in the utils package. And so, um, and then we're going to take that content and save it into this object called customer A data. We'll run that real quick. Um, and I hit control enter, and you can also just hit uh, the run button here. So that puts it into ours memory. Um, you can hover over this and click on that, and you can see a preview of the data frame here. So you see the data represented. It looks like what the CSV looks like in the Excel file. Um, here's the first tip. Uh, you'll want to take a look at the structure of this object called customer data, the thing that we just read into R, or the thing that we just made um, by reading this object into R and storing it in this thing called the customer A data. So I'm going to hit enter and we'll see that it saved this as a data frame. Um, that's good. That's what we want. Data frame is one of the uh, data types in R. It's what R uses often to represent like tables of data. And when you're reading a CSV or SPSS file or that sort of thing, it's typically saved as a data frame. Um, and a lot of functions that you're going to want to use for data analysis expect that you're using a data frame. So that's good. Um, but the other thing to look at is um, the columns and their types. So um, in data frames, each column uh, is preceded by this dollar sign. That's a way you can indicate a particular column of interest within a data frame. So for example, uh, if I type in the data frame and then dollar sign, you'll see each of the columns here. And so uh, that's why they're presented in this console when we asked for the structure of the data frame. Um, customer A data. And so we'll see that each of these columns is a character here. Name, a character, which means it's uh, just text. Uh, it's a text column. 
age is a text column and that's an artifact of the fact that there's some text in there that somebody wrote they shouldn't have but that happens sometimes um, income is a character uh, so it's just 0-8000 you can tell that it's a character with these quotes around it but what we really want is we want these to be represented as categories and R has a way of doing that it uses a column type called um, factors and so we'd rather have these characters be factors and so here is tip number two um, oftentimes when you're reading in a data file it will have an argument that allows you to read in text columns or what it's calling character here as factors which is how R stores um, categorical columns and so let's try to do that here and I know for the read.csv function the argument is strings as factors strings lowercase capital A and if you're using R studio as you type in strings um, you'll see this autocomplete and then we'll say strings as factors equals true and what that means is whatever column R interprets in this data file as a character or as a string column that's string character text they all mean the same thing um, whatever it represents or in interprets as a character it'll convert into factor and we yes we want that to be true so now we'll highlight this and we will run it again and that will read in the file again but this time it will take into account the fact that we want the strings as factors and then it'll store it as this customer a data so customer a data will be overwritten basically but for just to make it even clearer I'll clear out the objects that are here so now it's as if I hadn't read anything into R so now I'll highlight this and then hit run and now let's do the same thing so let me save my code now let's do the same thing str customer a data I'll let our studio do the hard work of filling that in and then hit enter again and now we see that compared to before where name age income and education were all characters um, you see that now R converted all those to this thing called a factor and for name it says it has 20 levels well I don't really care about name so I don't care that there were like 20 unique names present um, for age well you know I know age was supposed to be numeric but somebody messed up and typed in text so it's treating each of those numbers as like a different category but that's fine that's not the purpose of this video right now to look at age variable um, but I see that income has five levels so it's converted those to five categories R said okay um, you have five unique categories of these income brackets so it looked at each one of them and said okay these are the same these are the same these are the same and now you have five different categories um, it did that for in for education also so we see that we had five levels of education and that's great um, that's that's a good step forward um, so we see that those categories are already there now I'm assuming that the data are already clean we've already fixed any issues that were present um, and I'll create another video about how to clean up categorical uh, variables in the future but for now for the purpose of this video I'm gonna assume everything is good to go and we'll explore one of these categorical variables we'll explore the education variable so one of the helpful functions for exploring categorical variables is the table function in the base package so I'll type in base colon colon and then table and um, because I want to look at a column in the customer a data put that in here and then I'll use dollar sign because it's a data frame and then let me find one of the categorical variables I'm interested in in this case education and then I will run this and what I see here is that I see each value of education and then I see a count of the number of times that response was in that column um, and one of the things that you'll want to pay attention to is that by default table doesn't present any missing values so you'll want to use this other argument uh, called use in a 
and then there are a few options but the one that i always use is if any meaning if there are any missing values go ahead and present that and so i will highlight that and hit run and we don't in fact have any missing values here but that's one thing that you'll want to keep in mind um, because sometimes it's important to think about whether or not there are missing values so is this the distribution for these responses um, among everybody that responded uh, or is this the the distribution for only the 20 person that responded those mean pretty different things and you may want to represent those numbers uh, as percentages differently now um, you may find it easier to look at the distribution for categorical variables as a uh, proportion. So you can do that by uh, using the base colon colon prop dot table, so proportion table. And what this actually takes as an argument or as input is a table. So we'll take this table that we have here and we will just call this uh, education table. And then I will, so I'm taking this table here and then I'm putting it in this object called education table and I'll run that. And now if I just go into this console and I type and I put in education table, I'll see that it's the same thing. So I took the contents of that and put it in there. And then I'm gonna put, take this education table and put it in this prop.table. So if I run this, I get these values represented as proportions. And so you can see that this is why it's important to consider whether or not you want to show your missing values. Because if you show the missing values um, in the first step, then you'll get a percentage for the missing values also. And if you have a lot of missing values, well then this, these proportions will change. Um, and so that might be that something that's important to share with the client. Another function that I'll use often, but it's typically when I'm cleaning data, is this function called unique in the base package. And what that does is it'll give me all the unique values for a particular column. So it's not gonna give me a table or anything like that with counts for each of those responses. But if I run this, I'll see that um, high school grad is one value. Some college is a different one two-year or four-year degree is one advanced degree is another a little college is another and this is particularly helpful if you're looking at a categorical variable that has a lot of levels um, you know like uh, a dozen 20 50 because then you can look at all of them and then you can start to get a sense if uh, some of those should be collapsed or some of them are not relevant uh, you can just get a uh, all of them listed at one time and then decide what to do about fixing them. If this video was useful and you want to learn more about how to use R for your client's data analysis needs, please subscribe.